today we're going to look at the seven largest 3D print farms in the world, rated from smallest to largest. And the rules are they have to have a minimum of 100 machines. So the very first print farm we're gonna look at is Out of Darts. Luke over at Out of Darts makes Nerf gun accessories and he's been doing it for several years right now. He has a great YouTube channel, it's fantastic. I also recommend his print farm tours. Recently he transitioned from Prusa machines over to Bamboo A1s and has been continuing to expand that print farm. Back a year or so ago, he had about 100, 150 machines. It may be more right now, but we don't know. So we're pulling from a little bit of old information on that, but he is able to use 3D printers because they allow him to create a large number of SKUs of products products so that he can meet all the needs of the target demographic that he has. People are modifying these Nerf guns, so they want to find accessories and parts and pieces. And he's been able to also justify and expand his revenue by adding in third party components like screws, motors, darts themselves, that kind of a thing in order to grow a very vibrant business around this core hobby. And 3D printing him allows him to also develop new products such as his Jupiter guns, where he's able to actually create something and modify it and iterate on it over time by using the flexible manufacturing of 3D print farms. But it also reduces his inventory, lets him stay flexible as he's growing, and it has been a solid business. Number two is Lost Boys Lab. Originally started by a race car driver, Lost Boys Lab is a 3D print service where they do engineering design and production runs of parts. They use all types of different machines from Mark Forge to Forum Labs to so on and so forth, but their FDM print farm does have the bulk of it. All told, they have 150 machines that can do all kinds of different production work from standard types of parts to engineering performance parts. They're really focused on the design and what 3D printing can do from a sustainability standpoint. They also partner up with other companies to manufacture unique types of materials that are like TPU based and have a lot of good performance characteristics. They've made everything from speaker housings to NFC chips and that kind of thing in order to actually produce cool parts. And they're really focused on what the technology can do from an iteration standpoint and what it can do from just a supply chain standpoint. Number three, Darson 3D prints. There is a wave of flexi fidgets being made these days, and Darson is one of the leaders inside of that. With somewhere between 100 and 200 machines, they are constantly producing primarily fidget toys. Their Instagram is fantastic showing off how they do it, and he really tries to educate other people about how to build print farms. They recently expanded to a larger space that's about 5,000 square feet, and they're putting in more machines every single day. It's fantastic to watch. They have both an Etsy store and other sales channels where they're moving these fidgets and they'll continue to expand it. But the new multi-material components of these 3D printers make it really useful because you can make these multicolored foxes and fidgets and whatever else it happens to be in order to catch this trend and really maximize it. And since you're able to fill out the build plate, they're able to produce large numbers of them with pretty doggone high margins so that they can produce good products. And it's a great example, again, of a print farm allowing you to address a wave inside of the market as these items go viral viral on TikTok and social expands, you are able to address what people are looking for and then continue to expand when you find that thing that works. They made all types of items from dragon eggs to little fidget toys, but when fidget toys take off, they are able to focus on that and create more SKUs of that. And then when some SKU of that works out, they can create different colors or seasonal versions and that kind of thing in order to really grow and expand. Number four is Z Bailey Designs. Also, another fidget toy, fidget animal distributor and maker. They're based down in Utah and they're producing only these fidget toys and they're focused on that entirely. They are building a toy company built around really good branding, really good content. They use entirely bamboo lab machines. And again, it's a situation where the printers are flexible enough to allow them to create very customized, very focused, very targeted types of products to where when Valentine's Day is coming around, they can do Valentine's items. When St. Patrick's Day comes around, they're able to create green items. So the 3D printers allow them to adjust and move and address these current demands in the markets. Right now they have somewhere between 100 and 200 machines. It's a little bit tough to tell because it's not fully disclosed and we're not able to read every single Instagram post that they have. But they're growing and they want to keep on growing and they've had a very efficient manufacturing process up to this point. Now admittedly they don't have a huge factory around it but their systems are clean and processed and since they're focusing on this core type of product they don't have to worry about a lot of change over a lot of challenges of going from this to that. It's all wiglets as they call them and they're just changing out colors and that kind of thing in order to address the demand so it can still be a very efficient manufacturing process at the end and maintain good margins. They're also doing something very smart, which is using all of that flexibility to, like I say, create brand around these, but also make them collectible and make them a desirable item to where they can have recurring revenue into the future. 
Number five is the Prusa 3D Print Farm in Prague. Estimated to have somewhere between 600 to 800 machines total, the Prusa Print Farm is based out of Prusa machines and they are producing Prusa machines. Prusa has always used a print farm to produce the components of their parts. And it's a good way to both demonstrate what the printers can do as well as maintain flexibility inside of their production. Because Prusa machines have always been known for being modifiable and upgradable over time. And in order to demonstrate and support that, they use their own print farm to make the parts for the printers that they ship to you. And this is kind of an interesting demonstration because they have flexibility inside of it all, but at the same time, they're doing fairly large production, hundreds of thousands of parts at a time. But they are pretty much the same parts with minor adjustments to it. So it's a good way of kind of having a super flexible injection molding machine in the background where the print farm is very robust because there's no single point of failure, but they're able to keep on producing parts at quantity. And of course, it's a feedback loop to the product itself where they can improve the machines as they use their machines. And Prusa is most certainly one of the most formalized print farms to where they have built out the software and the control systems and the collection processes. And one of their heads of manufacturing is from Foxconn. So they know what they're doing as far as building a factory around 3D printers. But again, the fact that it's these kind of centralized parts, it's not like a print service that you can go access. They have a very controlled workflow of how this part is qualified and is designed and is sliced so that it can be produced in scale. Number six is Gantry. Gantry is a lamp company. They're estimated to have somewhere about a thousand 3D printers inside of their factory. Historically, they had used Creality machines and their own internal design, but recently they've shown off that they have moved over to Bamboo Lab machines in order to build out their factory. They focus on creating very high-end type of lighting that are designed by industrial designers all over the world. They work with the designers for weeks, months before releasing the product, and when they release it, they have a very refined item. And this is a fantastic example of how premium 3D printing can be. The parts are printed off on the machines, but then they go through a sanding and painting process. They have weights added to them, and of course they have the lights added to them. Gantry is kind of an industrial design company. They're making beautiful home goods that anybody can purchase anywhere inside the world. It looks like much of their business is focused towards wholesale as well as their consumer product website. And it's a fantastic example of what 3D printing can do, because it allows them to bring a new product to market with really unique and difficult to manufacture geometries and create something really premium and beautiful. And then they're able to iterate over time and introduce new products and new SKUs to where now on their website, they have hundreds of SKUs of all types of different interior design styles that allow them to grow. And printing has been an affordable and scalable way for them to continue to grow as they have done this. And it's a really clear example of how 3D printing can become a truly professional form of manufacturing because these are final items going to final customers. And there's this stigma around 3D printing that just simply shouldn't and exist and Gantry is a fantastic example of just blowing through that and creating beautiful premium products that happen to be 3D printed because it is a manufacturing process that works for that. Next on our list, Jinchi Toys. And we're taking a bit of a step up to 2,500 machines. The Jinchi Toy Company focuses on fidget items and animals. They are producing these at scale because those types of fidget toys are fantastically difficult, if not impossible, to produce with traditional manufacturing. They cannot be injection molded, so you have to have a print farm in order to mass produce them, and that's what they're doing. They're making fidget dragons, but they also focus on internal design. The print farm allows them to create many different SKUs, and for these fidget dragons and flexi toys, SKUs is really important so that you can hit what the person is looking for so that they don't have a dragon that looks like everybody else. But all told, they have 2,500 machines of several different types spread in their factory there in China. And they are producing these items. 80% is for external export and about 20% is for the domestic market. But their demand has been growing. And as this wave of fidget items has grown, they are riding that wave and they're able to create a large number of SKUs to meet whatever the customer is looking for. They're able to produce it at scale a minimum of 2,500 per day, and they're able to export these internationally and do it affordably. So if you've ever gone shopping for some of these fidget dragons, and you might've seen some listings for like three or $4, those are very likely produced by a company like Jinchi. But again, this is a print farm that makes preset items that are designed and created by the company or approved by the company. They're not open to the public. The largest print farm in this list, which we're kind of excited about, 
is actually the Slant 3D print farm. And unlike all the other print farms before it, which just make products internally, the Slant 3D print farm is designed for you guys. It is designed for other people to access. We have things like our teleport app where anybody can connect an Etsy store into our print farm. And whenever you get an order, we will print it and ship it directly to your customer for you. Our print farm is composed almost entirely of our own machines. We mess with some third party ones to know what everybody else is doing. But our main print farm here in Boise, Idaho is spec'd out for 3000 machines. And we have other factories starting to go in actually this year. And the slant factory is the only factory that people outside of the building can actually access. And the reason for this is, is custom prints on demand is fantastically difficult. When you have products all internally, you're able to deal with your own workflows and processes and know that parts are designed and qualified. But when you are a print service, you have to deal with what people give you and you have to build the processes around that. So we have done everything from manufacturing our own material, our control software, building out the processes around it to make sure that when somebody submits a part to us, it comes out good and is shipped quickly. But we're able to grow and we're able to enable people who probably don't have a business large enough to build out a giant print farm or have the time to do that. So we're able to support hundreds, if not thousands of different small businesses who are growing to produce their fidget items or their original invention. So we're able to grow much bigger and we have to. Our print farm has to be enormous so that when surges come through, when something goes viral on TikTok or the Christmas season comes around, all of our customers' orders are still shipping on time. When it's internal, if we were just making our products ourselves, we could pre-prep ahead of time and plan ahead and there's only one person to have to talk to us. But when we're dealing with everybody else, you have to build enormous print farms in order to have the infrastructure to make sure that parts arrive on time. So it's a completely different animal. We looked around for other print farms that are also services so that other people have other places to go use and utilize and we just couldn't find any. So if you know of other print farms out there that are large and have more than 100 machines, go ahead and comment down below. We would love to share all the other print farms in the world that are doing it. These are the ones that we could find that had more than 100 machines. So hopefully that shows you what is possible inside of mass production 3D printing right now and how big these print farms are becoming and how common they're starting to become. Subscribe to the channel in order to see other things around mass production 3D printing and print on demand and design and we hope to see you again next week. Have a great day everybody.